Then back up to three, two, and... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dummy Jimmy number 66. Round number one action coming in here. L3 ID to break it in towards Rip Scander. And, uh, yeah, like we were saying before this in the pre-party, the pre-show, um, it's good to be back casting with uh, the, you know, the one, the only Dummy Jimmy caster, I believe. Well, thank you for the, uh, praise there. We have some chat fans to talk about right off the bat. It says they were posted in the Twitch chat by Ben's Bruja. It says they were Ramis, Cassian, Leeson, and Kha'Zix. Ramis, a highly mobile champion, very good tank, casting, good mobility, good crowd control. Leeson, durable bruiser, Kha'Zix, powerful assassin. We see him here at the Chebsex stream in Italy. Long range poke. Traps division, very annoying. Hecarim, Hecarim makes for a solid dive. A lot of people, uh, you know, don't play him too often, but he can really get active around the map and dive. He doesn't really bring a lot of crowd control to the table, though, unfortunately, like some other these characters do. And then, Juice and uh, Diana have good poke. They do a lot of damage, at least durable AP character. And Pantheon, good durable AP, AD Bruiser with a stun and good map presence. Yeah, uh, I mean, Pantheon is a very, very strong champion. We have Zodis and Diana and Black too, but, um, I feel like Champion's ultimate is pretty much the utility of Chasterton. We, I think we probably talked about this before. It's good we see some Nurse, but Nurse really didn't really hurt him too much. So unfortunately, Dominic Dominion and all the Dominion crews do not still want to play Chasterton and still want to ban that one out. So I, I like that ban, but unfortunately, you know, they try to balance it, but they didn't really balance it. I don't know. Yeah, we haven't gotten too far into investigating how casting functions post those changes, the changes are kind of significant, what they did to his rift walk. They changed the cooldown on it, but did not change the buff duration on it, which is very interesting. Seeing Wukong being picked up, arm reduction, AoE airborne, he's a great initiator for any team, especially when paired up with another AD. And then we seeing Ezreal, one of the safer range AD, global map presence because of two-shot barrage, and he's uh, very difficult to catch because of a pain shift. And Evelyn, who is an assassin that puts the bottom lane in a constant state of fear because you never know when she's going to appear because that spell. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to have to lock in on the Sona and maybe a Timo in the middle of that Timo. A very annoying character that we uh, all agree to. You coined it, of course, the Field of Dreams that could be happening with all the mushrooms. But I, I don't know, is Timo still really viable in the main arena? Yeah, Timo is definitely a character that's still seen a lot of representation, uh, but as opposed to being a must ban, must pick, he's starting to see a few less bans and a few less picks overall as uh, time has gone on. The, the caps are still good. And Timo, however, is notoriously squishy, and the, the sort of vision and tanky thing that we have going on right now with all of the Hexic Sweepers, Dresdor's Landing, means that there's going to be a lot of quick effects. Uh, there's some talks going out on the map, and that really minimizes the mushroom placement because you're going to be bush checking with the vision effect item anyway, so that you make sure the enemy team's not in there to gank you. And it will reveal, reveal those mushrooms. There's three or four people pop a shot on them at once, you get rid of them pretty quick. They can throw out four or five mushrooms at a time if the team's grouped up together. And that really hurts that map control that he used to have. His damage is still excellent, that blind is still one of the most brutal things in the game. But for overall map control, he doesn't quite have bring the fear that he used to, I think. Yeah, which is, well, mostly what we one can do with that one. And then Will Timo will come back into play, or Will Timo just sit up and he did camouflage a little bit, and probably lose up today. On the other hand, we do have Turtle 147, and he's picking up the Heimerdinger. And Heimerdinger, yeah, in the way back in the beginning, everyone wanted to pick on the Dominion. Still pretty good menace, and can still push out, but is he still pretty viable at this moment in Dominion? I'm sorry, I was typing something yep. in the Twitch chat. Did you know what again? Heimerdinger, viable. Heimerdinger, I think Heimerdinger makes for an excellent push. And I feel like Heimerdinger is better up top lane than bottom lane. In bottom lane, he is really vulnerable to ganks because his escape mechanics are very poor. Uh, if he extends across the center of the bottom lane and kind of has his, the, the rear approach behind him, if he gets past that health relic, then he can really get beat up on by people that are kind of slow charging down to the bottom. But up at the top, if you want to kind of do slow push a little bit of season or something, then I think Heimerdinger is great in that situation. No problem is he still doesn't really have an escape mechanic or anything like that. 
but if you get into a prolonged engagement, which you tend to now in Dominion because of the sort of tanky and vision meta that we're in, then he can be good. I think there's better picks though. Yeah, definitely. And well, Nebo, so we're going to try to pick it out. We're going to try to lock in that U at the bottom. They do so have the top already put it out, which is for time to bring everyone U and now the U as real, or A B as real, if you want to call it that. On the other hand, why is this serious? On the blue side, we're going to have that Sona Wukong Timo right in the one day only Yorick. What do you think about the Neon's overall for both teams? I look at both of the teams. I see, over on the left side, I see them not really having a lot of poke. They, I mean, Sony's got a little bit, or Sony has a little bit, Kino has a little bit, but they aren't particularly long range. They do sort of have to get in harm's way to deliver that. We're probably going to see Rebel Dragon go up down the bottom lane. I believe she's a bottom lane player, if I'm not mistaken. Over on the other side, you have Ezreal, who's sort of really good at poke, for putting it mildly. And you have, if you're going to actually take time at the top, then you can sort of have that artificial range increase by throwing down a little bit of a forward turret and then backing off a little bit and then punishing anyone who tries to come up to uh, snipe it out with melee attacks. It's one of the things you can do with that particular champion. Uh, although I don't know if they're going to be sending timer bottom or if they're going to be sending you bottom. Yeah, that is kind of the question. I mean, those are two that really could play as a play out as a bottom pick. I feel like they need off on the team for a new best. Maybe the time they didn't pick would be the bottom pick just because it has a lot of sustain can just push through and win out a bottom lane fight. But yeah, that's just a very unfortunate thing. We also see the similar blockers in the off and seeing over on YC series is that you have the four exhaust with the one garrison on the five um revives while on the other hand Maybe they don't have all the revives in the world. They have two revives and a lot of other summer spells on two boots. So we'll see how that will help out or maybe affect the game, the meta of Walk on the Dominion round number one. And we're going to go back into this in just a little bit. Why is the series on the blue side? New Earth, purple slash red stride. And it's out there at the very beginning from where it's with the one million again. We're still trying to wait it out just for a little bit. If you guys haven't heard about Dominate Dominion, you can go check out the Facebook Dominate Gaming. And that's through the Facebook, facebook.com slash Dominate Gaming. If you want to check out the Twitter, um, if you want to check out the Twitter, you do have to check out twitter.com slash Dominate Dominion. I thought it was going to say, Dominic Gaming. It's at, Twitter. we've uh, done a whole change over to yeah. Dominic Gaming now, so it's at Dominic Gaming on Facebook.com slash Dominic Gaming. So all the social media web on that. You can also check out DominicDominion.com inside the press. So, I think. Possibly. Yeah, for now. Yeah. Uh, we haven't changed so, that up yet. Yeah, if you want to go spend <laughs> the next tournament, Sorry guys, again, it's, it's, for me it would be refreshing. It's been quite a while since I've checked one of these. Not too long, but still uh, quite a while since we did do one of these. And also, within it, it's always been, well, it's been an interesting kind of duo partnership. We we do the casting together, but uh, I, I feel like, like because uh, in some of the script, I'm more of like an analytical caster than uh, when we first did it in Dominate Dominion. I don't know where it was, maybe Dominate Dominion 7, Dominate Dominion 13 or something, just us to uh, get in it. Like, I was trying to be a play-by-play caster, but I was trying to be like a comment- public commentator as well. And in, in this setting right now, when we're at Dominate Dominion number 56, It'll be quite a, an experience just coming back into this with Gander because I know Gander, if you have heard any of the chats, it's just great, 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 great play by play. And he's very vivid with them, as many as new teams. And we'll see if that will come true with these two teams, which, I mean, they're new teams, Slice is serious and being able to come back to the Slice. And the interesting thing about these, uh, about these two particular teams that we're going to see in this game is that one of them is made up of sort of a miscellaneous group of, or maybe an assortment would be the word I want to use, an assortment of people from the Dominion community. And I'm not recognizing a lot of names on the right side. Uh, Ben's Bruges, Triona, Weeks, uh, Rebel Dragon have played before here and there, but I don't ever recall them playing together or on this team. So there's a little bit of tournament experience put across. 
uh, the people that they have, but it remains to be seen how that is going to uh, help them going into this next game against uh, against our opponents. Yeah, definitely was the series going to be on the blue side to be uh, made up of security owner on that Wu Wukong going to be played by GD Gun Spruza, which one going to be playing the Chima Vi going to be played by William Swift, Swift, Swift but if I can say that right, Double Jack is going to be carried up by York, and it's one half of the team. It's L380 with the bird getting some work, and I am one half the cast and crew here with Gander, and what do we have on the purple side side? side? The purple side is, we see if I get these two, two team names right. Uh, Nubo's on the right here from the left? Yeah. Okay. On the Nubo's team, we have Sag Bomb playing with Ezreal, uh, Firehawk playing as Evelyn, Turtle147 playing as Hamadina, Alex Goodguy99 playing as Dragon Force, and Oreo Fetus playing as Master Yi. I'm a big fan of Master Yi. I'm a little bit scared to what the future holds for him and his build. And with all that uh, rework information that has been floating around, it should be very interesting to compare uh, current V to the changes in those go live. Those haven't gone live yet, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, they, they, they definitely had Like, everyone's still testing it on the PBE right now. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, Messi, Renza, some of the other uh, champions getting changed up just a little bit. I mean, there's even a talk about in Season 4 or something, they're going to actually change up the jungle to bounce it better so that the solo laners, that's the bottom laners, and some of the threats um, uh, are going to get, you know, less experience in that, and junglers will get more experience. There's a lot of changes that can happen in League of Legends, and again, for a game that's just really just one, one thing, it's, well, Dominion, plus the line, and um, some of the threats right now, what's a little bit of Halloween does. They are always innovating in this game, so cops the riot to do for doing, well, what they're doing with the game of League of Legends. Well, they're really active about the update, and I feel like every uh, week or so, there's some kind of patch in the app download, and I'm always like, oh man, patching, but it's actually refreshing that they give this game as much time as they do. Um, there are many, many, there's been many game companies over the years that have just not given that much time to their games. The fact they are constantly working on improving and adjusting and things is I think it's really good for them long term and I'm happy that they put that effort in. Even if I do have to go make a sandwich once in a while when I come home from work. Oh man, I'm patching. Well, I'll go make a new sandwich real quick. Well, yeah. if it's patching for just a skin though, that's not so good. Well, usually go pretty quick. I don't know what yeah. really. Seeing Rebel Dragon uh, telegraphing going down bottom. Looks like it is going to be hammered in there in the bottom lane against Yorick. Uh, having up top is going to be everybody else. And that's up top is something that I really like, but I don't really see a lot that's going to take advantage of Jarvan's Cataclysm in this particular team comp. Now, he does uh, work pretty well still with Ezreal, but there's nothing really that takes advantage of the fact that Jarvan can keep people kind of bunched up together. I mean, maybe two shot barrage at early levels, but there's not going to be any serious late game combos, I think, coming from J4. I think it's just the mobility that Nubos is going to try, or Nubos is going to try to just use, because we have so many new story characters that, um, well, Alpha Strike with the Jack Flagging Rat and with the Hugging Shift, but I don't know if it's going to really work out for them. A lot of damage going to... both ways. J4 is going to be the first one to go down. Or they're getting low on health next. Uh, both teams up to fight now. Uh, Firehawk trying to get away. As the Red Arcane Shift don't quite take that game in the distance. He's going to do escape. Flashes out. And nope, caught by Wukong is going to be taken out, and they're not going to split Wukong off for the drill. They're going to bring him back towards the window instead, and secure that point, not going to overextend for that at the moment. Very, very good job by the team of Life and Series. If you really just clap over there at the window, make sure that they should actually get out point. Other than that, though, I mean, the, the revives are pretty key, and I don't think there is any other possible way to really come back in time to really try to fight for that again. So, so there's this little bit of point made coming back into play, 186, 471, and why this area is really trying to keep up their lead. Ezreal and Eve moving through the center of the map. Timo does spot them, Luke's poking his head out for him, but he, I think he is aware that everyone is there. I think I saw that uh, mark here over her head. Jarvin coming in from the back for a little bit of damage as well. Um, actually, a little bit late to the party, though. We'll see if his presence is going to help turn things around for him and his allies here as Vi gets low on health. 
Yeah, we do see Superb going to take a lot of damage off on the backside. It's going to get smiked down with that. Demacia and Sandy are actually going to pick up one. Now we're going to see Firehawk try to come back line to Kay Ana. Actually going to pick that one up. No, AFC just going to get a reset. Ooh, now, good son. Back up. And Static Boom and everybody else is going to try to get out of there. But it is looking like there's not too many more bodies left before that team of the finish up one by one by one. But that two shot barrage is going to be sealed out. It was a very quick two shot barrage as well. Showing that sun timing was excellent and very fortunate. I was able to help them a lot in that engagement. Just uh, William to put up the top now. As you're up, coming up a little bit short on that interrupt, unfortunately. Is going to be able to zone by away from this for a while? Perhaps not. Assault and battery. As you know, have that arcane ship pocket, and he does. He's trying to get no position where he can use it. And there we go. Ducks away. We can tight Vi around and keep this point neutral for quite a while while waiting for his allies to get there. As long as he keeps camping that arcane ship cool down, then he should be just fine. And so he needs up the Mursi and the Monkey is going to get their guns and pick up that show. Now, Oreo Seed is going to see Hyrule and the Flash to get around and away from this one. And taking the windmill is going to go back to YJC. We don't have anyone who can range and interrupt really. I mean, driving to a very slight extent. But when you get to a position where you have three people up top and you don't have any range, you just kind of have to sit back and up and take that point. Airborne on Wukong, Master Yu, Alpha Strikes in. Not quite getting a lot of auto attack in, though, unfortunately. Yeah, I think, um, Space Force is actually playing a little bit of tankiness right at the moment, or is just going to go for Yomi for right now, only having that brutal ice. So, so it's going to be pretty slow for him to actually attack in. So I spawn from back in, we're going to see if they can find the ease in the jungle. You have an idea of where she might be? She has been discovered. Runs over that Noxus trap, but has enough movement speed that she may still be able to get away. Sona intercepting. And Firehawk is taken down, top part of the map. However, things are a little bit differently at the windmill. Yeah, as you has got a great, great two-shot barrage to finish up two out of one shot of there. So, very, very great job by Static Bomb. And now we're going to see the windmill going to be contested upon, but never has the man of aim. Good quick to interrupt by Weeks. Doesn't want to get too close to that. Because Weeks could be one J4 airborne combo away from disaster. Sona instead is going to be the recipient of that. Stun not able to save her. Unfortunately, that's Hero versus the world that our minions are to help push this capture over, and no purple capture, I mean, you're not quite able to do it this time around. The cycle of the capture should be able to pick it up. Yes, and there's J4 with the airborne, but, oh, the Noxious Trap, so close to being able to take him out. If he didn't hit that other one, that might have been, like, out for him. Yeah, they noticed where the position was, or if you just actually going to finish that one up. I thought J4 was actually going to knock into it, and literally just walk up to it. Nothing's going to happen in the there. So do you see how Medina actually winning after the advantage over in battle lane? So they're going to pick that one up, then they're probably going to help out Riddy, and Oreo is just going to get chased upon. And Oreo says, is you? That got damage from Timo. Leaves the window completely open. See him checking the bushes above it with the sweeper from Timo. Two shot barrage only interrupts one target. J4 gets there in time to stop. Timo, although it's supposed to be a Vi, Vi, starts to fight with Vi, Timo begins capturing, stop the tower from firing on his ally, and that is going to be enough to secure them the kill. Uh, good job by the team in picking up and, and making sure that they can deny J4, but also as we go, to be taking out the relics so they can actually help out the team, in the sense that if there is a big fight engagement, he's ready to try to fight it down. So Fred and Static Bomb talking to each other, but now Bruce are coming in. Oh dear, Ezreal by himself doesn't really have an escape from this. The two shot barrage does not give him enough distance to get away. However, he is able to pick up a kill on Vi in the process. But that was a trade out before his ally got there. It's not put Master Yu in kind of a bad position with both of them over there. And neither one of them can really interrupt Yu unless Wukong wants to burn the ultimate. Yep, and we're trying to try to go in again over there. Over at the bottom though, there was a game by Sona, given in and help the Rebel Dragon pick up that kill, so I'll see it yet again coming up to assist at a capture point. Hopefully you can just make sure that they don't get that. As you with the aggressive arcane shift forward, once to get in, bunch of minions showing up to the fight. Stunned by Sona, very well placed. Not a lot of damage really coming out from it as a follow-up though, unfortunately. A chain barrage happens, or two top barrage, excuse me. As uh, Sat Bomb is pursued away by Yorick. And Tower's still neutral. Yeah, so the enemy recipient of the Catacombs is great dunk in on by day 4. Now William Swift Break chasing them 1 and 2. Double Dragon in the head is finally to get that point. While William Swift Break goes down. 
And if I'm not going to be able to escape from that, unfortunately, Yorick is secured at the bottom tower. A level dragon in control of the boneyard now for the team to put them in a four top temporarily. And Yorick not going to go for the harass coming up that. Going to go ahead and use this time to recall safely as they are recapturing this point instead of pushing for the opposite one. So the tower over here is defended by the fact that both of them are stopping the recapture this. Yeah, definitely. I was about to say uh, something I mentioned that the item differences right now for both teams. What do you think about the sweepers? What do you think about the mid range? Oh, there's a significant, significant disadvantage on uh, against um, new bows. Yeah, uh, Life of Sirius has five items to give vision right now, which means they have absolutely no fear of bushes or any sort of jungle engagement at all. Uh, Game 4, unfortunately, section away from his team. Oh, the exhaust is really going to limit the distance that he can get away after that arcane shift. Uh, good timing by Reach there. Unfortunately, not quite able to get completely in and take care of him. But they are in a uh, very aggressive position on the map. With the location that they're in, Life of Sirius, has been applying pressure in this area of the map around this building. And because of that, uh, Nubos has not really been able to push out. As they are getting the final order feed, it's actually going to get help. It's got a bump to pick up one, but still, the damages could come back in. Why should we could go and try to take it apart, but now, obviously, these guys going to change out the fight 4v3. When the stripper is going to be the one getting chased upon, or they for pick up the kill. It is an ignite, and it is expelled by the static bomb. We wanted to go for the stun save, but it came a little bit too late. That's the retreat to the top tower now, imbalance and engagement 3v4 here. Ezreal is taking care of some minions over by the drill. Seems confident his team would have this without him, but maybe would have been. Oh dear! <laughs> Those Kilo Mushrooms, J4 almost getting defeated as well. However, that health road completely saving him there from being defeated and him having to dash away low on health now. Has to retreat from that side of the map because he really can't do a lot. And without those vision items on their side, they are not going to be able to clear these at all. Yeah, it's looking like it's a very, very coordinated team of life series with the vision advantage, but also the jungle events, which is very key. And Nubo can, can't really mobilize themselves to actually try to go for a backup or try to even go straight up to the windmill just because there's so much destruction. Also, there's so much vision coming out from life series. Another thing to note about the vision items is the vision items also give very good stats. Uh, in addition to just the vision effect. Airborne from Wukong has a lot of people there, guys. Unfortunately, J4 uh, throws down the Cataclysm, but I don't necessarily think he needed to do that there. Now he's running over a Mushroom. Tino is just going to kite him through a second one here as well. That's slow debuff, and that game is kicking away at him. On the top tower, they were able to get that neutral. Tino versus the world. And he's not going to go for it. He could have gone for a quick interrupt, but. We would have put him a little bit too close to the enemy team, and he did not want to risk that because they are in control of the Boneyard in the bottom part of the map. Rebel Dragon doing a good job of defending that from Heimer right now. Yeah, Heimer did just against the bottom of the end to the run, and now all you see this is he's going to get caught in with one. Going in for a left knife, he's going to get one, two, three shots on him. Can he pick it up? One more shot, and one more kill. And Rebel Dragon has been doing a really good job so far against Heimer Dinger. You're having a lot more sustain than Heimer does. And two on one here. Oh, the two shot barrage does not connect. Omen of Death is available if Rebel Dragon wants to use it. But it looks like Rebel's going to go ahead and back off. They're going to let them take this tower up at the top, though. Things are going a little bit differently. J4 by himself, not able to defend the 1v3. So they're trading the Boneyard for the Windmill, still maintaining their recap position. Yeah, but we do see Rebel Dragon in the down. He's going to go reanimate and going to go kill Auntie. Or actually, Sex Bomb going to take that one down. And Turtle now in a little bit of trouble. It's not enough for him to try to get out of that proposition. And great job by Jordan mm -hmm. keeping up the damage. Rebel Dragon able to pick up that kill on Heimer Dinger, keep him off the map for a little while longer. Master Yi retreating, takes some damage. J4, good zone, keeps him away. And Evelyn taking the fight with Wu Kong, very dangerous. Uh, Evelyn not terribly durable. I mean, she does have the BFT items in her build, but all she has going for her is that little bit of health at the moment. A little yeah, bit of health from Sleeper, a little bit of health from Dive. No armor or anything, though. Unfortunately for her, yet. And it's very interesting to see where they're building out into, where the first is going to be taking the pot again, but not to hear any coming back on the side. That is bomb with the help of Weak Morning, and you're able to pick up that kill. And this is good to hear, with Ezreal being taken down early on, it's going to go very unfortunately for Nubos. Uh, just Evelyn by herself has to retreat. Double vision, you are absolutely 
He's certain that they could see where everyone's going. Good slow by Shakiri Ono. Fine, for extra time for Timo to catch up and secure the kill on Evelyn. And now, getting offensive, he's going to put the mushroom yes right there. That's the spot that's really annoying. If he's not having any vision items in the team, he's going to run straight over that on the way. There you go. Pops on two people to slow them. Another one who knows the passage so well for that mushroom placement. And that's just free damage. That is still on the first so they're now going to be getting to come by 3 3 4. Although, which one's taking a lot of minions? Uh, so, as a does not matter to me, it looks like a spring. The top point, Jarvin against Vi there. Wukong uh, is coming up from the side. Master Yu gets involved in the fight. And not yet. There you go. Finally, we get the kill against Vi. Wukong by himself doing a really good job with delaying for now. J4 breaks the capture to engage, and that cost the team some time. Master Yi, oh, the Alpha Strike, almost saving him there. Yeah, unfortunately, still Wukong going to get the kill. Now, Shikiri Ono going to get him back in. As you guys are going to go try to talk to the Ono, so Ono's not going to be able to be, well, talking to the bow, because he is actually new, but it is going to be that's why I can make it back away and the team. Oh, Starting with a fair amount of damage to this game, she's going for a more of an AP heavy build rather than a tanky support build. And Rebel Dragon Jorik still you know, keeps control of this Boneyard Tower and wisely backing off once again. As Rebel knows that if Jorik is swept, they can just move across and take control of that bottom tower and it forces her allies to come down and give up top position to bail her out. So very safe play from Rebel Dragon in the bottom lane. It's been paying off for this entire game. Then Ruja finds Eve, puts a lot of hurt on her, immediately reach one catch in the fight, they want to focus Eve down as quick as possible, it looks like, turning their attention immediately over to J4. Timo with the double kill. And Timo with the triple kill. Time to get breaking away, so we are not going to see some crazy Timo Penta, unfortunately. And Ezreal is just baiting it out, drawing him all the way across the side of the map, taking him away from the drill. And I don't know whether that was intentional or not, but as you go tying them away from the drill towards the windmill means that when he dies, the enemy team was not in a position to try and take that tower. Yeah, but we still have the brain that he's in the way because the time we tried to respond over the top and unfortunately gave up that position in 254 to 10. It's looking like YC series is going to be able to take out the round one matchup. And Rebel Dragon once again in control of her opponent's power at the end of the game. Good play from her. And this Vision Island, she can say how powerful Vision is in this game mode. If there had been any Vision protection over on Nubo's side, they would have had a different time dealing with some of those uh, massive traps that were spinning around on the map. And having five for Y for Sirius meant that they had absolutely no fear of engagement in the jungle whatsoever. Because with that having a one minute cooldown, you have five of them, you can throw one down every 12 seconds. That means you, they last for 8, if I remember correctly. Mm. Is it, no, it lasts for 10 seconds. So they are, they're running on only having 2 seconds in between vision proc. With constant highlight on area almost. Yeah, and uh, if you have somebody that is in stealth, the, or possibly just any other kind of vision problem, like this here, it's that, yeah, we will be able to take care of that, no problem. And, well, they took it back down to heart with a 354 to zero advantage. So yeah, if you, have an, if you have a team on any team, make sure you pick up that sleeve because those sleepers really also help nullify everyone's ability to uh, surprise assault anyone. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sleeper or even greater special weapon. And, and again, like you said, the stats, if you want to actually see their stats, they're really good, actually, for just a really fast map. You want to have those mid tier items, and then if you go to late game, transition through that. But with that, Hexit Sweeper or with a good Spectral Lantern, which is really, really good by it.